Hi guys, Michael here. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a choose your own adventure game like this one called Zack and the Zombies using Google Forms. So we've got here this game called Zack and the Zombies. Let's let's try it out and show you. I'll show you what it does. Wrong button. Let's get that right. Let's do the preview button and let's zoom in a little bit. Alrighty, so Zack and the Zombies. This is a choose your own adventure survival game. Read the story and choose what to do next. If you don't survive, keep trying until you do. Right, let's do this. Next. Waking up. You wake up one morning to discover your shoes are missing from the floor where you left them the night before. Do you look under the bed? Yes or no? Yes, why not? Look under the bed. You look under the bed and discover a zombie wearing your shoes. It's asleep. What do you do? Sneak out or attack the zombie. Let's attack that zombie. Why not? Keep it exciting. Attack the zombie. You attack the zombie and defeat it. Feeling rather shaken up, you decide to go to the kitchen to make a cup of coffee or go back to bed. I won't click any further because I don't want to spoil it for those who might be doing this particular game in my class. So let's go back to the actual form creation area and let me show you how this works. Right, so just like a normal Google form, we've got um, we've got an image here in, added in, which you can do from here. This is a multiple choice question with one choice. Let's do this, and it's a required question. Notice here it says after section one, which is what this is, continue to next section. We'll explain that in a sec. Section two of eleven. So there's 11 sections. So we've got this thing called waking up and you saw those little headings in the demo before. You wake up one morning to discover your shoes are missing from the floor where you left them the night before. Do you look under the bed? So that's a question, a multiple choice question. So notice when I click on this question, there's some options here. So if it's yes, we want the option to be go to section four, look under the bed. If the answer is no, we want to go to section nine, go back to sleep. So if I wanted this to be somewhere else in the form, I could click on that and change it to point to any other section. Um, what is important here is when you are creating your sections that you actually name them. So that way it is much easier to know where you're going when you are setting these up. Right, go to the loo. The zombie jumped out of the toilet and ate your brain. You are dead. And then I've got a play again option, which is go back to section two. And I'm done if you don't want to keep playing anymore, which is where you go to the submit form at the end. Now, how did I get these to show up? These don't show up normally. Well, let's just create a brand new form and let's do that. I'm just going to call this adventure game. Let's go on and adventure. Okay, let's go. And it's a required question, so you have to tick on it to start. And then we're going to create a new section or add section here. All right, so we have an untitled section, and we want to call that. We'll call it the beginning. And then we will create a question, add a question, and it's going to be multiple choice. You are walking down the road when all of a sudden. A car pulls up next to you and the door, the passenger door opens up. A voice says, get in. So option one, uh, get in the car. I'm just making this up as I go along. I've got no idea what I'm going to do next. Uh, run away, stay and talk. Now, make that a required question, that's important. Where are we going to go from here? Well, we need to create the sections afterwards. We're going to have at least three more sections after this one because we've got three options. So I'm going to create a new section and I'm going to call them based on what these options were. So get in the car. Another section called run away. And another section is Stay and talk. Right, so it's important to name these sections. Okay, so now what I can do is down here where it says that well, it's got the three dots, I can click on that and I can show 
this option here, which is go to section based on answer. That's the trick, that's the ticket, that's the thing that makes this whole game work. So click on that, and all these options come up that weren't there before. So if we get in the car, we're going to go to the, and look, as you can see, these sections have names now I can easily identify. I don't have to remember, hmm, which one was it, the one that takes me to the car? Um, so I can click on get in the car, run away, that's the run away section, and stay and talk is the stay and talk section. All right, so let's add a question, a multiple choice question, of course, make sure that it's required. If you don't have it required, they can skip a question and your game's not gonna work anymore. Right, so, question, you, so you just continue the story. Don't worry about it being a question, you just continue the story. You get in the car and it drives away. You are never seen again. The end play again or on finished we'll go to section based on answer if it's play again we're going to go back to the beginning we don't need to start here but you can just start here at the beginning which is the start of the actual game I'm finished we can change that to submit form because that that takes you out of the form okay I think you get the idea so you just add another multiple choice whoops if you put it in the wrong spot it's easy you just grab this little uh, handle here with the, th the six dots and you just drag it down until it goes to where you need it. Alright, so run away, you run away and that car chases you down the road. Screen for help, grab a brick off that side of the front of the side oh. and throw it at the car. Jump over a fence to a nearby rock. Alright, so again, you got your options, go to section based on answer, screen for help, where do I go now? Oh, that's right. So you actually need to have the sections built after it so that you know where you're going. So add a section, and this is going to be called what? That's right, screen for help. Let's add a new section called wrap up. And then one more section, jump the fence. Right, so we click on that, and we click on screen for help. Grab a brick from the side of the road. Grab a brick, jump over a fence into a nearby property jump the fence okay so they're all pointing to the right area now now if you're doing this in my class which you probably are if you're watching this video remember that you want to be using your um, flow chart to remind you what to do in your story also if you want to move a section like because they might get a little bit out of order they don't have to be in any order but it might help you for them to be in a particular order so for example stay and talk well that's a long way away from the stay and talk which is up here you might want to click on that, the three dots, and you might want to go move section. When you click on that, you can then go here and grab these little six dot things and just drag it to where you need to. Or you can press the arrows and just move it up and down. Now, another thing is the standard color for Google Forms is purple, which after a while you get sick of looking at it. So it's always good to, I can click on that, give it a name. It's always good to change the color to something a little bit more specific. You can customize your own color. And when you select that color, it gives you some background color options. I kind of like that dark one. And you've got some font options, not very good font options. So I tend to just stick with the basic one. But just so you know it's there. And also, why not put an image in as well? gives it a bit more atmosphere. You want a game with atmosphere, so I'll just grab that generic one there. Either way, there's a whole heap of options for your header. This is the header. Also, you could put in a YouTube video. If there was a video that you've made that sort of sets the scene for your for your game, why not? You could add cutscenes like a lot of um, computer games have. That'd be a fun thing to do, actually. I wouldn't mind trying that uh, sometime. You can have images instead of text for your game. And I think that's actually more interesting. You want your game to be as visual as possible. So you can use animated GIFs. So how do you do that? So you click on screen for help, for example. You click here, add image.
So when your game is finished, ready to go, ready to send, just go up to the send button, click on that. And I usually just go to this link option here. And that's really long, so I'll just shorten it. And I can just copy that, or I can just press the copy button. And then I can paste it to whoever I'm sending it to, to play. Alright, hope that's helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and bye for now.